The extreme southwest of Australia is a magnificent part of the world. Cloaked in forests, home to unique plant and animal life, the epic coastline runs as far as the eye can see. The Margaret River region is also a modern, vibrant destination. From bustling farmers markets full of boutique produce to craft brewers and magnificent vineyards producing some of the world's best Chardonnay, Semignon and Cabernet Sauvignon, the southwest is very much on the map. This is the backdrop to one of Australia's most beloved multi-day mountain bike events. 1,200 riders have made their way to Margaret River and over four stages they will tackle the best tracks and trails the region can offer. They will ride over 180 kilometres and climb 3,300 metres before they cross the finish line near Cape Naturalist. Some have come to win it, some have come to enjoy it, but everyone is here because it's the Cape to Cape, Australia's longest running mountain bike stage race. Welcome to Cape Lewin Lighthouse, an iconic landmark in Western Australia. This is the extreme southwest of the state where the Indian and Southern Oceans meet. This is the 13th edition of the Cape to Cape mountain bike stage race and after a COVID enforced hiatus in 2020, the event has returned in full force for 2021. 1200 pairs and individual riders have registered for the 2021 event. With incoming travel restricted to just a few COVID-free states in Australia, the fact that so many riders have turned out to support the event is testament to just how well loved it is. Oh, it's great to be back here. I haven't been here for like five years, I think. So I've missed a few Cape to Capes, so really looking forward to it. Ah, just the trails, really good trails. It's so, so good, smooth flowing. The hill, not looking forward to the first hill. That's always a killer, but uh, other than that, nah, just a, you know, good fun, good time, so. Oh, guys, how are you going, guys? I'm Mark from uh, Mad Cycles, and my mate Scotty. We're pairs this year in 2021. It's been a hard year to get get it where they've got it, but I reckon uh, well done. I'm looking forward to the four days. <laughs> We're going to have some good times here today. <laughs> Woo! A while back, uh, Jason Dover asked me if I could uh, help commentate with the event, and it just seemed to stick. And this is the first year I haven't. Be I've been able to get out of. Uh, commentating so I'm actually really looking forward to it. It's a really good good feel rocking up just as a competitor. Any day that you can ride your bike and not be at work, it's a fantastic day. The Cape to Cape describes itself as a ride not a race but over the years it has become one of the most prestigious titles in Australian mountain biking and there are a number of elite pairs lining up with both eyes focused on taking the title. What's the plans for the first, say, half an hour? Um, I think we'll just settle into the race, see see how everyone else is going, yep. uh, see how we, we measure up against the competition, yep. Yep. and hopefully put the hammer down. <laughs> Guys, we've been really blessed with the weather today. It's a great morning. Go and enjoy the ride. We'll see you at the finish line. Stage one is possibly the most iconic stage of the Cape to Cape. The sun is out and the wind is up as the riders depart the Cape Lewin Lighthouse and begin the climb up Skippy Rock Road. It's a stiff climb, one of many on today's stage. Dropping off Skippy Rock Road, the riders get their first taste of the magnificent Kari Forest, which characterises this region. This is the traditional opening stage for the Cape to Cape and has featured in one form or another in every event. The Cape to Cape features four distinct stages, each focused around the best trails between Cape Lewin in the south and Cape Naturalist in the north. 
At 39 kilometres, stage one is not the longest ride of the week, but it does have the most climbing, with riders having to tackle just under 1,000 metres of elevation gain. Riders head north from the lighthouse into the forest of Lewin Naturalist National Park above Augusta. With a mix of forest road, single track and short sections of tar seal, this is a fast stage, but it's the short, grunty climbs that leave a lasting impression on the riders. First lesson of the Cape to Cape comes just seven kilometres in. Make sure you've done the training and make sure you've had the bike serviced. Oh, it's certainly telling me I've got a heart. <laughs> it's thumping. Is your heart broken yet? No, not yet. Early on. Early days. Ooh, Sarah Baumbacher. What do we call this? <laughs> Through what's happening here, mate. Oh, snap the axle. <laughs> That oh well. Tomorrow's another day, eh? we'll get into it. This is only the second time I've got off, that's good. Where are you at the moment? Tell us about where you are. I'm 176 beats per minute at the moment. <laughs> um, I don't know where I am. I'm completely lost. Um, somewhere in a forest. I don't remember which one. Oh, this is Heartbreak Hill. That's all right. Yeah, I'm not heartbroken yet, but it's only day one. <laughs> so we'll see. At the business end of the stage, the pairs that have come here with GC title ambitions are driving the pace. Russell Brooks building comprising Nathan Jones and John Gregg, solo GC rider Matthew Shepard, the colourful and tastily titled Rainbow Pedal Pops duo of Bailey Christie and Rowan Brown, and the Tasmanian pair Tim Harmson and Tom Cheeseman in the Blue Derby Pods race team are the early race leaders. The flowing single track and well-graded forest roads make for fast and tight racing on stage one. The Cape to Cape is not an easy race to win and it often comes down to mere seconds even at the end of the full four days. So every second counts even on stage one because gaining time on the single track stages to come will prove difficult. So stage one of the 2021 Cape to Cape is predominantly all about climbing. It's, um, it's the seeding stage. It's the stage that people like me go into unseeded and you have to work your way through to try and get one of those black dots. There's a huge amount of climbing for a reasonably short amount of uh, you know, riding. So 39 kilometres and nearly a thousand metres of climbing with some steep pinches in there. There's some really cool stuff around the back of the uh, Augusta golf course. Um, there's a few climbs that people have to walk, you know, like doesn't matter how good you are, you've got to walk them. But you know, it's, it's all part of it. But you end up coming out of that stage and back to the lighthouse, pretty excited actually. And uh, you know, can take your eyes away from looking in front and keeping where you're going and have a look at the views, just magnificent. Bruno, keep it going. Yeah. Go, Bruno. <laughs> They're going to be steeper every year. It's <laughs> 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 amazing. Come on. All right. This is the second time. So, it's been a few years since. I'm a little slower. <laughs> Skippy Rock Road, 4K, that's all that's left. Well done. 4K then, you're doing well guys, it. keep on coming, Skippy that's Rock it. Skippy Rock Road guys, 4K in your home. Yeah. 
After just one hour, 36 minutes and change, the Russell Brooks building pair of Nathan Jones and John Gregg crossed the finish line with solo GC rider Matthew Shepard. The Blue Derby Pods rider team crossed just a sniff under two minutes later in second, closely followed by the Rainbow Pedal Pops in third. After a wet and wild week in the lead up to the event, stage one has gone according to script and the riders return to the iconic lighthouse with one of the toughest stages of the week safely behind them. Uh, it was the second last climb, so the one leading up to the Telstra Tower. So yeah, we were with the, um, the Tasmanian guys uh, and yeah, just um, uh, up the pace a little bit and yeah, they, they went backwards, so just, just kept pushing it. And the highlight of the stage for you? The uh, highlight of the stage was, I don't know, getting rid of the guys up that uh, second last climb and then just riding with John and I and, and Matt, um, Matt coming with us and yeah, uh, yeah, we had a really good time and rode well together, so look forward to the rest of the, the race. Well done. Thanks. Stage one, how was it? Yeah, it was a lot of fun out there. Uh, it's awesome to be back. I definitely missed not being here last year. Uh, first time doing mixed pairs for me with Izzy. Um, yeah. It was really good. Yeah. How heavy was he to carry around stage one? Oh, look, Lucky's a lightweight. <laughs> no, nah, it was really good, actually. He took care of me all day, and we'll back up again tomorrow, which will be nice. Love a few that had to get off and walk or run but made it through yeah how'd you find it yeah yeah i've done this a few times before and it never disappoints that uh, heartbreak hill is always a bit of a toughie and then uh, those three ups and downs at the end just completely finish you off <laughs> and being your first race together i mean just tell us tell us about the chemistry that what were you found out there and happy with how everything went yeah we've ridden once together outside of racing mm. and um, we found it were pretty similar. Zoe's quick and I've uh, probably got a, the wisdom behind me, a little bit older, but I think we'll match up well and so we keep an eye on each other out there, no problem. <laughs> While the eyes of the world tend to be focused on the front of the race, the real work is often being done at the back and this year is no exception. I'm cooked, mate. Oh, it's good, except for those hilly bits. <laughs> Took a bit of uh, getting up. Should I be getting up or something? <laughs> no, you could no, all, mate. Oh. Yeah, good day, or well, good few hours. Yeah, heard a bit, then some of the hills. I thought we were doing the Cape to Cape walk. <laughs> <laughs> Max, coming in. Come in well. Max. There's six of us, yeah. never too old. You see, we're all in our 60s. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got up those hills. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's more of a walk than a ride. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Good to finish. Yeah, that. good. Right. Yeah, great yeah. course. Finish the first day. So that's all that matters. Time for beer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, time, sorry, time for what? Time for a beer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For the winners, stage one is over in 90 minutes, but for the last rider home, it is almost three times longer in the saddle. Bridget Kane, in her first ever mountain bike event, completes stage one. I wanted to do it in um, four hours, but 4.20 is not bad. I mean, that's what I've got, I don't know what the official time is, so maybe it's less, I don't know. So, yeah, no, it was good. I have enjoyed it. I hope I'm gonna be okay tomorrow. <laughs> I don't sit out. Uh, so, my name is Bridget Kane. I'm 46 years old. Um, mountain biking is only new to me for the last year, and I'd probably only the last year. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't do a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I don't have many hobbies. I've got a few craft things going on at home, but I'm kind of that person that starts things and never finishes them. So, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really doing much exercise. I thought this is a good way to get some exercise, and it, it was fun. Um, I wasn't enjoying riding on the road on my other bike, so saved up some, used one of 
um, my mate's bikes for ages and um, yeah, eventually got my own bike when there was one available and spent loads of money on it because I loved it straight away. Um, I said to someone the other day, luckily my determination probably outweighs my skill. Even, I have to, even if I have to walk across the line, I'll probably drag my bike behind me if I have to. <laughs> um, I, think, I think I'll be able to finish each day, even if, it'd probably take me a while. Probably, I don't know when they pull you out, I'm not sure what the rules are on that. Um, but I think I should do all right, at least the first half. <laughs> um, we'll see how we go by four days later, see how fatigued I am, um, but hopefully good. The magnificent Colonial Brewery just outside Margaret River is the host venue for the next two days of racing. For a number of riders in the field, this is where the challenge begins. Getting back on the bike day after day after day can be tough if you're not used to it. But everyone is looking forward to what the Margaret River stage has to offer. You feel blessed coming down here, you know, we're riding through some carry forests yesterday and today we've got, you know, the great single track in the pines and compartment 10 and you end up at a pub, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, a winery, I think, on Sunday afternoon. So, you know, it's amazing. It's really good. It's incredible. A little bit sore. Yeah. Not going to lie. We did push quite hard yesterday. Yeah. But, um, now nah, we're, we're feeling refreshed. We're ready to go, aren't we? Yep. Pretty good. Yesterday was the second time I rode my mountain bike, so it's good fun, but hard. <laughs> This is my, uh, my, my tenth year, so uh, just, just enjoying it. Not, not as fit as I used to be, but come back to do it because you have mates that do it and you want to be here with them. Yeah, single track, going to be awesome. Yeah, hopefully we get up front and uh, we can enjoy some space in the single track because there's some really wicked trials over there today. Yeah, how great is this area? Oh, it's unbelievable. So good that this is all compartment 10 and pile pines tomorrow, uh, today, so can't wait. The Margaret River stage is the one that everyone looks forward to. From Colonial Brewery, the riders haul it north and west towards Margaret River, looking to get themselves into a good position for the many kilometres of single track in the Pines and Compartment 10. The single track forest sections are what make this stage so special and although large sections of the pines have been felled since the last event in 2019, new trails have been built which promise some freshness for the returning riders. A big bunch of riders with all the main category contenders smashes out the opening 21 kilometres and hits the pines on the edge of Margaret River ready for some single track action. The pace is furious as the leaders look to stretch out the bunch heading into the single track where passing is limited. The yellow jersey holders at Brooks Brothers Building are once again battling with rainbow pedal pops for the lead. A little bit of local knowledge perhaps helping to open up a time advantage on the Tasmanian pair in third. The epic series of events is focused on pairs racing, which creates a whole different dynamic. A pair is only as quick as the slowest yeah. rider and teams cannot become separated. There are races within races at the Cape to Cape. The yellow, orange and red jerseys of the open male, open female and open mixed pairs comprise the major titles, but there are masters, grandmasters and great grandmasters categories for pairs and solo as well. All of them vigorously contested. Margaret River has become a mecca for Western Australian mountain biking, 
and it's thanks in large part to the trail building efforts of the locals that areas such as the Pines and Compartment 10 have come to fruition. The growth in mountain biking has become such that the Western Australian Government has actually invested tens of millions of dollars into cycling as part of the COVID recovery plans, including into Margaret River mountain biking. The um, investment in the West Australian Government, basically post-COVID, has been such a positive thing for a mountain biker. I mean, we've got some, we're getting more trails, more people are coming into mountain biking. It's really sort of a, for, for us locals, to, there's so many more people who just seem to thrive off getting out on their bikes with their families and seeing some beautiful places in the southwest. In the last two years, I've seen Margaret River sort of flourish with tourism because West Australians are, are not travelling out of the state. So it's actually, it's really been a positive in a, in a way. I mean, COVID isn't a good thing, but we've, at the end of it, as a mountain biker, we've got more tracks, better tracks, and we're becoming a destination in the southwest. I mean, from Bunbury right through to Pemberton to Nanup. I mean, Bunbury's got 14 ride locations within an hour. And Margie's just got the surf, wine, beer, and now all these wonderful mountain bike tracks, which is really good. Um, this year's Cape to Cape, we've used a lot of the new trails, what we can. There's still more coming. That'll be open towards the end of the year, December, we believe. Um, so we've rolled the riders through, you know, the best trails Margaret River has to offer. And Margaret River's a, sort of a township, has got a lot more coming as well. Um, investment wise, the money just seems to come and come and it's great from the government. And that basically just goes back into the people and the, and the local businesses and, and the cafes and the wineries and the local bike shops, they're all getting busier and, and it's, a, it's a great thing. After a two-hour tussle on the swooping single tracks of Margaret River, the lead pairs arrive back at the Colonial Brewery finish line with Russell Brooks building and Blue Derby Pods ride team both neck and neck, but there is still time for some last second drama. Look at them go, neck and neck. Oh, one of the riders is down. Tim Harmsman's comes off his bike just before the finish shoot, handing a second stage win to Nathan Jones and John Gregg. And Nathan Jones. Thankfully, Harmsman is quickly back on his bike. And waiting for the Fond rider now. It's a repeat of Stage 1's placings as the rainbow pedal pops pair of Bailey Christie and Rowan Brown cross in third, one minute behind. Fantastic. It's way better than yesterday. Way less hills. Very technical. Oh, I'm feeling good, but I'm wishing I was at the end. <laughs> but this has been an epic stage. It's so beautiful. Hey. Love it. Hey. Fantastic trails. Just great fun. Really good day. Absolutely. <laughs> At the end of stage two, only one jersey changed hands and it was the great grandmaster men. The hotly contested jersey for riders 60 plus passes to the shoulders of Peter Campbell and John Farrelly, Eyewise Optical. Today was awesome. Um, yesterday I was absolutely stuffed and I really suffered. John was the man at the front waiting for me, encouraging me, dragging me along. Today it was the other way around so I'm happy with that. It was a perfect day, look at this. the weather, not raining, it's drying up. Yeah, it was just great.
Uh, Super Sock Saturday is a bike doctor fundraiser that we do every year to uh, raise funds for at-risk youth, uh, about 400 young people a year we work with. So all funds raised here today uh, go directly towards supporting at-risk young people uh, through programs um, and employment pathways. But, uh, we've got some people that have come back and have got uh, I think four and, four and five and six pairs so it's great to see um, people get around it. Day three is the midway point of the Cape to Cape. Two stages down and two stages to go. The sun is out, the legs are tired, and there are a few new stories to swap over coffee at the Colonial Brewery. Um, yeah, no, look, day one, awesome. Uh, bloody hills, bit of a grind, but hey, you know, it was good. I enjoyed that. Uh, yesterday, had a few dramas. Uh, got about an hour in, got down about the bottom of the pines, and uh, the free hub on my bike just blew out. Uh, couldn't pedal. I'm like, oh, I had no idea what was going to happen. I thought I was, I thought I was out, but uh, I caught the ranger. The guy was a legend, and he, uh, he was in his ute. And I said, dude, do you mind if I chuck my, uh, my bike in the back of you? Could you run me into town and drop me at the bike shop? He's like, yeah, sure, no worries. So mid race, he does that, and they uh, started working on the bike. The guy was really cool, but then he realised he didn't have the right parts. He used a drill and an angle grinder, and he, he put a new hub on and, and got it fitted for me. And uh, I think I got back into the race down at the bottom of the pines. I lost about two hours. Uh, I thought maybe they're just going to cut me off and tell me to take the shortcut home, but no, I managed to get home and did a monster time, but uh, I'm just glad to still be in the race. <laughs> we are so fortunate being a WA. Uh, I, I accept uh, just how lucky we are, and just to be down in Margaret's right now, we've just got the, f honestly, the weather is amazing. Um, it's some of the nicest landscape in Australia, and to be riding through it um, with a whole bunch of people that are super happy, and uh, and then just the whole atmosphere and the vibe. Everyone's just in a great mood, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just brilliant being around everyone. And uh, Kristen Gardner, come on down. As mixed pairs, uh, Cam Ivory is his legs. Come on down. Oh, Middle Earth awaits you. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun today. Um, I love the, the kind of old school techie trails. Uh, it's nice and nice and skatey out there on the pea gravel. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And how are the legs today, Izzy? Oh, not too bad, I think. Um, we'll see what happens when we get out there and start riding. But for the most part, I think I'll be all right. Four, three, two, one. Yay! We are away and racing here as a once again, we depart the Colonial Brewery just outside Margaret River, this time heading north into the magically named Middle Earth. The stage begins with a far section of unpaved road designed to get the riders out to the good stuff as directly as possible. This is the longest stage of the week, 59 kilometres with 25 kilometres being the single track of Middle Earth. This is tight and technical riding between the trees with farm tracks to link it all together. Truly the stuff of legend. Conditions are perfect for stage three of the Cape to Cape. Blue skies and no wind to speak of means it's a fast run out to the start of the Middle Earth trails. For the race leader, stage three is about consolidation. The jersey holders only have to stay with their rivals to maintain their lead, so that means riding smart, riding carefully, and keeping the pressure on simply by being there. There is little room for error on the tired trails of Middle Earth, but this is what the riders are here for. With names like Desolation of Smaug and Mordor, there is no doubt in the inspiration, but in place of orcs and elves, you'll find berms, rollovers, log rides, and small jumps between the trees. 
The single track stages are what riders love on the Cape to Cape, and it makes for fantastic stage racing provided the right amount of caution is used. Bike skills on technical trails are crucial, but knowing what lies around every corner and over every jump can make or break your day. You all right? Yeah. Got you on camera too, mate. Yeah, boy. It also goes well when everyone exercises the right approach. Patience on course, whether it's the elite front end of the race or the back, can be the difference between a beer at the finish line or an ambulance ride to the emergency room. Yeah, so um, 2018 we moved over from Victoria to WA and um, I was watching SBS and saw a Cape to Cape doco and went, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing. I think that was the trigger to get me really serious and really enjoying it. And um, put in a bit of training and was doing pretty well and was having a great time. Then we got to day three and uh, I was really looking forward to it. Had plenty in the legs still to go. And um, I think it was about six or seven Ks in, uh, I had a, a guy who wanted to do an overtake and I'd, I thought, yep, that's okay, but we're, we're moving pretty fast here. We're doing about 35K an hour and that's about all I remember. Um, we made contact, other competitors stopped thankfully and uh, gave me a hand, but I knocked myself out for about three minutes. And um, yeah, a few days in hospital, but um, ultimately, really, the, the thing that should be drawn from this is the overtakes. You know, we, we've got to be careful, guys. We've got to uh, talk to the guy you're overtaking, make sure he acknowledges that you want to do an overtake, and you know, wait till he tells you. Ultimately, communication would have solved that problem. No one would have gone down, no one would have been hurt. Lots of other people's races impacted because I was, you know, sprawled across the side of the trail there and everyone had to stop and let an ambulance through. You wait, don't put the person under stress, and um, yeah, hopefully everyone goes home safe. Thanks, mate. For most riders, a few seconds will hardly matter over four days. Even the leading mixed pair of Izzy Flint and Cam Ivory have time to share their experience on stage three. It's pretty slippery. So we're just over 30 kilometers into the third stage of Cape's Cape. Somewhere in the Middle Earth Trails. It's so tight and twisty in here. And I have no idea which way we're facing, but it's a lot of fun. It's been marked out well. We're just trying to stay focused, not miss any turns, not hit any trees. Keep it smooth. It's awesome. The Tasmanian duo have been one of the few pairs able to travel interstate for the event and are making the most of the opportunity, opening up a lead of over 20 minutes at the start of stage two. The pair have ridden together many times, but this is the first time they've raced together as a pair. Ivory has a slew of titles to his name on both the mountain bike and the road bike scene. He's represented Australia at the Commonwealth Games, but this will be his first taste of success at the Cape to Cape. All right, well, on the commute back to Colonial now. Uh, pretty busy after all that single track, lots of turns. What's the plan for getting back, Is? Oh, I'm just gonna see if you the whole way back, I reckon. <laughs> all right, I better get to the front, do some work. It's a third comfortable finish for the Tassie Turbo Chooks pair. Time to cross the finish line, grab a fresh leader's jersey, answer a few questions and head out to sample some regional delights. We're just going to go out there, have a good time, pedal hard and yeah, hopefully come home in the leader's jersey at the end. <laughs> a week at the Cape to Cape has to involve getting away from the bike for a few hours. As well as being an outdoor paradise for biking, hiking and surfing, the Margaret River region offers some of the best culinary treats anywhere in Oz. 
sample some of the local produce, visit the local markets, take in a bit of Western Australia's art and culture, and of course, get tasting notes on some of the region's best wines from the cellar door itself. There are dozens to choose from. The Cape to Cape is very much a destinational event, focused on the best this region has to offer, both on and off the bike. Cape to Cape is one of three events in Australia that are part of the global epic series of mountain biking stage races, including the Pinnacle Absa Cape Epic. Port to Port is held in May in the Hunter region in New South Wales, and Reef to Reef is held in August in tropical North Queensland. Together, these three Australian Epic Series events form the triple crown of Australian mountain bike stage racing, and riders who complete all three become triple crown legends. The races have the shared ethos of good times rolling, with each having its own unique destination, awesome fun trails, good vibes, and cold refreshments at the finish line. The Cape to Cape has evolved significantly since it started in 2008, away from the concept of point-to-point -point racing onto custom-built single track, but never lost its focus on what makes this region so special. We, we put the best trails on the ground, and from day dot, working with the boys, and we've always agreed as a group that we want to put the best racetrack down, most enjoyable ride. I mean, as an event organiser, and we've got so many more trails. It's a bigger playground for everyone on pushies. Um, mountain bikers expect now good trails and they're certainly being delivered. As riders assemble at Wise Wines near Cape Naturalist, the weather gods once again smile on the Cape to Cape 2021. Last year we didn't have it. COVID, unfortunately, yeah, got the Cape to Cape. Um, but the positive out of that is we had time to work on a bigger plan and change the nature of, of the stages. This year it's a little bit different because we're finishing to the north. So we're, we're, we're finishing up near Dunsborough, so true, true back to how it used to be Cape to Cape. For a few years there we did the loop courses and didn't really go north of, of this area here, it's sort of carbon up. Um, so. I think the true essence when you said you've rode the Cape to Cape, you have rode from Cape to Cape. And it's been a real positive, I believe, that we've had, you know, two of the finishers have been at a really good brewery and, and the lighthouse on the first day. So the people have seen spectacular locations at the finish and starts. And in between all that, it's just a great trail networks. One more stage to go, one more chance to capture a photo beneath the arch and only a few minutes until they are underway one last time. Oh, I'm feeling, uh, legs are feeling tired, I'm feeling good in spirit, a little bit of a flutter, a little bit of nervous energy because I know there's a big hill coming but no, looking forward to it, it's going to be a great day. Fantastic. It's such a good event. I've never done it before, but I really, really like it. There's a lot of pain, so you're mentally done and physically done, and you still come back the next day. So there is something wrong with all of us. <laughs> but it's fantastic, and I'd do it again in a minute. The push to secure a category win ends today, and for the Davison family, it could be a special year on the Cape to Cape. Looking forward to the single track, as usual. Um, We've got, I think, a light nine minute lead. So if everything goes to plan and we don't have any mechanicals, it should be a good day out. Yeah. Yep, my dad's racing in Grandmasters at the moment and he's leading with his partner, Matt Sevier. Yeah, it could be a double podium potentially. Um, I think the race is gonna be pretty fast. We're trying to get out the, the front. Uh, it's quite a climby track for such a short run. Um, so yeah, we've got about, I think maybe we might have a 20 minute lead and we'll see if we can maintain that. I don't mind having to run my bike back if I break something. So we'll see how we go. Point of first and second places, almost set in stone. Five, four, three, two, one, and the right. Same all come through, black dots are already a
racing uh, technique. Lots of old school attempts to take jerseys after the last uh, 13. For the race leaders, just 34 kilometres lie between them and the Cape to Cape 2021 podium. Today is about keeping it together and making it back without any mishaps, forcing the chasers to set the pace and try to force something out of nothing. As the lead vehicle peels away, the hammer goes down and the race is on. It looks set to be a frenetic closing stage. The Rainbow Paddle Pops duo of Bailey Christie and Rowan Brown, together with second placed Blue Derby Pods ride team, bring the hurt in the first half of the stage. They open up at early lead on the yellow jersey pair of Russell Brooks building. Nathan Jones and John Gregg have held on to the time advantage they earned on stage one until now, but the pace on stage four appears to be more than the lead pair are willing to match. Starting and finishing at Wise Winery, Stage 4 takes in the best tracks in the Cape Naturalist area. This is the shortest stage of the week at 34 kilometres, but with 700 metres of altitude gain, it will be a stern test for the legs that have already been put through the ringer. Heading out to the beach to make it a true Cape to Cape experience, the stage concludes with almost 16 kilometres of single track just outside of Dunsborough. This is some of the most unique riding on the 2021 edition of the Cape to Cape. Gravelly coastal terrain and vegetation unlike anything else which really adds to the experience of journeying north from Cape Lewin. The solo men's yellow jersey has been a hard fought category all week. Michael Denton has pushed race leader Matthew Shepherd hard over the first three stages and is at it again until Cape Naturalist Rocks take a bite out of his back wheel, effectively ending his chances of overhauling the leader. The trails have been here in Dunsborough for a number of years, but work done by local builders in 2020 has taken the ride into a whole new level. to have fun <laughs> like it's been every day but um seems like my tires got other ideas good thing i'm not on camera yeah like there's no good thing no one's no one's seeing no one's seeing a close-up from dunsborough the lead riders haul it back to wise winery for the finish of the final stage then after pushing it right from kilometre one, it's the Rainbow Paddle Pop team of Bailey Christie and Rowan Brown who enter the finish shoot in first place with one hour, 31 minutes on the clock. It's a long two minute wait to see the next team, but it's Tasmania's Blue Derby Pods ride team with Tim Harmson and Tom Cheeseman who emerge onto the final straight to cross in second. A podium position is guaranteed, but whether they've done enough to win overall depends on how much time Russell Brooks' building have dropped. Nathan Jones and John Gregg cross the line 51 seconds later, but still with a minute advantage on the Tasmanian pair. 
Russell Brooks building take the overall win on the Cape to Cape 2021. Only just though. <laughs> it was close. We were worried for a while. They have had a oh, super ride. Nick Algy and Steve McNally secure the Masters title and it's a comfortable win for the mixed pair of Izzy Flint and Cameron Ivory. For the Davison family, it's a double celebration as Chris Davison, together with teammate Matthew Sevior, secured the win in the Grand Masters to be followed one minute later by daughter Zoe Davison with partner Kristen Gardner, who take the women's overall title. Oh my God, yes! I'm so stoked. Kristen. That was so good, following too. to come and ride the trails in WA. What a um, unexpected surprise. They're stunning. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice peak gravel, gripping track. That was great. Bit of everything, bit of bitumen. Just the right mix to finish up on. Pretty good. It has been a race and a ride to remember. This is an event that manages a perfect balance between challenging and achievable. Nobody has broken on the finish line, yet everybody has been tested physically, mentally and technically. This is what has made the event such a success and keeps people coming back year after year. So the final standings for the Cape to Cape 2021. Russell Brooks building take the overall GC ahead of Blue Derby Pods ride team and Rainbow Pedal Pops in third. An Irishman and a Kiwi win the Masters men ahead of WA Sports Med and Colonial Brewing Froffies. Mad Dog Davros take the Grand Masters men's title, while Eyewise Optical take the great Grand Masters win. Tassie Turbo Chooks take out the pairs GC and Weenie G and Z Dog take the open women's pairs title. Matthew Shepard wins the men's solo GC and Lucy Hill takes top spot in the women's solo GC. The last rider home on stage four just as she has been all week is Bridget Kane. Bridget completes the race in 20 hours. Drank the, Just had the Nurofen, had the water, had the hydro lights, had the deep heat, you name it, I had it. And just pushed through it. Every time I got a bit achy, I just walked. Well did all four days, that's all I wanted to do. Didn't care if I came last, second, third, who cares. Just, I was just doing it to see if I could, basically. And you did. And I did it. Yay, me. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone who participated in Cape to Cape 2021. Australia's most prestigious multi-day mountain bike stage race. See you in 2022.